Let's talk about the new variable strip width feature in MeshFusion. So here I have a MeshFusion setup, and I have strips here which are 65 millimeters, and then I have strips up top which are only 10 millimeters. Now the connecting strips are 65 millimeters, but now I have the ability to vary the strip width from the beginning of the strip to the end of the strip uh, by changing the start width and end widths. So if I change one of these parameters to 10 millimeters, you can see that now I have the strip starting at 65 millimeters and ending at 10 millimeters. Here's another example where I can use the variable strip width feature to get better cohesion and smoothness between my fusion strips. So up here I have strips that are a radius of 50 millimeters, and down here I have a radius of 10 millimeters for these strips. I can take the connecting strip and I can change the end strip width to 10 millimeters so that the strip tapers as it goes on to the inner part of this setup. Similarly, I can grab this strip and change the strip width to 10 millimeters. In this example, I've changed the colors of the strips so that as I adjust them, you can see uh, the variation very clearly. So I'm going to select two strips, and then I'm going to change the strip start width to 100 millimeters and the strip end width to 5 millimeters. And now you can really see the taper along the strip, where it starts very wide here, and then as we move along the strip, it gets very thin. Now if I hide the fusion source items, you can see how tight the strip is right here along the bottom, and then it softens as we move up, up top. So in addition to being a great way to kind of smooth or taper uh, discrepancies between strip widths, it's also a very good uh, design tool because we can have really, really sharp uh, bevels here that kind of taper off and smooth uh, as they move along the length of the strip. So here's a mesh fusion model that could benefit from some variable strip widths. I have some wide strips at the top here, which are 80 millimeters, and then all the other strips like here, here, and here are only 15 millimeters. So I can take these connecting strips and I can change the end width to 80 millimeters, which will kind of get a smoother transition between our wide strips up here and our thin strips down here. I can do the same thing for this strip here. So now we have a symmetrically uh, varying strip width along here. Now up top, I had a discrepancy between these wide strips and these thin strips. Uh, at the bottom, I have uh, all thin strips, but if I just want to get a different look, I can still vary the strip widths, uh, just kind of uh, for a different sort of effect. So I can take this bottom strip width and I can make it 80 millimeters. So now it flares at the bottom here, and then it gets thin as it approaches the top. And I can do the same thing for this here, where I just change the beginning strip width to 80 millimeters. So now it flares, and then as it moves along the strip, uh, it becomes thinner. So it's just a really good way to uh, get seamless transitions and to change the look of your fusion setup. As a final example to show the variable strip width, I'll take a strip on this mesh fusion model and I'll vary the strip width uh, in an extreme uh, way. So I'll select this strip, and then where it says strip start width, which is this part of the strip, I'll change the width from 6 millimeters to 50 millimeters. And now you can see we're getting a nice rounded bevel here. It's a very soft kind of a transition from this plane to this plane. But then as we move along the strip, it thins out and goes back to uh, six millimeters. So it's more in line with these surrounding strips.